My name is John Mosley. I'm representing Andis with Salon Centric, and I just come to give you guys a little knowledge. If you have some questions, please let me know as we get through this. We're going to work through this together. Um, I'm here for you, though, tonight. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to entertain you guys, teach you some stuff. And I've already did a little pre-cutting, but before I get into pre-cutting and, and showing the doll head and bringing the doll head into, into the picture, I want to talk tools because I think in order for us to know what techniques to use and what how we approach a haircut, we first got to understand the tools that we use. So tonight's tool selection, I'm going to talk to you about the Profoil Shaver. I'm going to talk to you about the Corded Master. I'm going to talk to you about the Corded T-Liner. And I'm going to talk to you about the Slimline Pro, right? And one of my favorites is the NVLI. So I'm going to talk to you about that. And the reason why I think these tools are very essential and needed in your kit is because one, if you're a cosmetologist and you don't want the, uh, sometimes I find, you know, going around teaching that some people don't enjoy weights. They don't like a heavy tool in their hand. So for that, I'm going to bring out the first tool we're going to talk about, the NVLI, one of my favorite, and just a little personal testimony of why this clipper became one of my favorites. It became one of my favorites because I was uh, able to go to Europe, and at the time that I was able to go to Europe, the master wasn't out yet, the cordless master, and the master is like my all-time favorite. And so I had no choice. I didn't want to go to a use another clipper so i said you know what let me practice with this envy and sure enough now i own probably about four or five of these envies just because it's lightweight still get the job done it's also a rotary motor clipper it has that adjustable lever so i'm able to get everything out of this clipper that i would with the master but it's a little bit lighter and so I always recommend that. It has about a two hour runtime. So if you're looking to get into that wireless world, the NVLI is super, super handy. And it's one of the ones that you should have in your kit. Now, staying right along with the clipper, we're gonna talk about the Corded Master. I know everybody's going into the wireless world, but for some of us, we still like the good old trusty plug into the wall situation. So this is the Master. It also has of course, that awesome lever. And I'm gonna talk to you guys about this lever a little bit later, but all time favorite right here. Heard it from me. Next up, we're gonna talk about the liner. The liner is important. Why is your liner important? It's because this is what gives you the ability to detail all haircuts. Most men, they are they like, okay, the haircut is cool, but if my lineup is right, they'll come back to you forever. So don't tell nobody I told you that, but the lineup is the key to getting that guy to come back sit in your chair. Um, the reason why I love the T is because of the fact that I'm able to get those corners in tight. I'm able to get behind that ear without having to hold and fold too much. I can easily just guide it around that ear and pivot off of the mastoid bone with my finger. So I'm going to show you that trick too. Last but definitely not least is your slim line. I have huge hands, but this still fits comfortable in my hand. I'm able to detail. One other little benefit that I don't think people utilize enough of is this little groove here in the back. You guys see that little groove? So if you place your thumb right there, that is a good balance point for you to gain control of this tool while it's in your hand. So make sure that you utilize on your slim line that little groove right there because it's gonna save you a ton of problems. And it's a lightweight clipper as well, great trimmer. So you wanna make sure that you use it for what it's designed for. Remember the word is trimmer, outliner, detailer. It's not to reduce bulk, it's for detailing and use it properly for that. Now. I know, I know. You guys want to see some haircutting, right? So, like I said, today I'm going to show you more tips and technique base, not necessarily just a full haircut. Yes, you can get those at Salon Centric. So when you look at this, I've already did a little pre-cutting, right? So I'm using a pivot point doll head. If you haven't checked the doll heads out, this is a phenomenal doll head. But you see, I did a little pre-cutting just 
to save us some time. So obviously this is the side that I'm gonna work on, right? Starting out, I used a little clipper over comb and then I tapered out in that temple area. So I wanna go in and show you guys how to do that. But the real thing that I'm really excited to show you about is the fact that most people don't know and don't think that you can actually cut a top of a haircut with a pair of clippers. Everybody thinks that you only gotta use scissors, right? So what are the key benefits of cutting a top of a head with clippers? You don't get cut. You don't have to worry about cutting your finger. You don't have to worry about, you know, making sure uh, not to cut past that second knuckle. So there's a lot of things, but also you could get the same technique. You could get that textured look, you could get that blunt cut look. You don't have to worry about, you know, is it gonna change the dynamic of your cut? No, it's not. It might actually increase your speed a little bit. So. As a Cosmo, I only use my five-star clipper and my peanut, but notice barbers have so many different clippers. Is there a re... I can't see the whole thing, but I'm going to say yes. Barbers typically get a groove with different type of clippers. They like a different type of number system, so it's really up to you. I love the Andis clippers. I love the Andis number system. I think it's uh, the great thing about it. Like Each clipper has the same system, so for me, that's one one key benefit that I love as a barber. I know you can use a pair of clippers to cut the top of the head because I'm a barber and and a Cosmo. That's awesome. I'm glad to see you, 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 you sharing your personal testimony with me as well. So this is awesome. So let's get started. I'm going to start out with the NVLI, right? It's very important when you clip or over comb, you understand contouring and you understand the ability to build the shape of a haircut you want. If you notice, I have my sectioned out from a, around the parietal ridge, but I also took a section from the apex to the low crown. The reason why I did that is so that I could connect the dots to create the silhouette that I need to help build this shape out. All right, so I'm gonna stand here. So this is the shape that I wanna build out and I wanna connect the dots using the length off of what I left previous, previously cut. So starting out, come in, I have my NVLI on, it's all the way open, meaning I'm gonna preserve length. I always like to clip rubber comb with a little, uh, to preserve that length. And the reason being is so that I could go in and do whatever else I need to, and not have to worry about taking it too short. Uh, the new Andis Masters are the bomb. Yes, they are. So, when I clip over comb, I hope you guys can see this. That's going to give me a natural contour. That means I'm relying strictly on that comb to run off that head shape, and that's going to give me my end result, right? But now, what happens if I lean this comb out or build it out towards me? When you put it up against the head, what happens is that you have a longer distance to travel. And because you have that longer distance to travel, that means that hair is going to end up being longer. So you want to make sure that you know which way you're holding your comb. Now, when is that important? That's very important when you're dealing with inconsistency in bone structure. So if you're looking at somebody's parietal ridge or you're looking at their occipital bone and that occipital, occipital bone is protruding out, you want to make sure that you don't build out off of that occipital bone because it's just gonna make the bone structure look even larger. So you wanna lean that in. So I showed you natural and I showed you building. You wanna lean it in so the spine of the comb is now facing you. That means you're gonna get shorter off of that bone structure. So make sure you pay attention to that because it's a difference from just cutting hair and tailoring a haircut. You wanna make sure that every guy you cut is tailored and that's why you could charge more money because you're tailoring it to fit this guy's bone structure and head shape. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. What brand of clipper? This is the Andis NVLI. Cordless, about a two hour run time. So let me, let me get to cutting some hair, right? So I'm gonna start out. In at 90, out at 45. A nice little scoop in motion. In at 90, out at 45. C-shaping. Why is it important to C-shape? You want to C-shape your haircuts so it actually starts the transition for you to, so that you don't have to work too hard. Another key tool that is very important is your Andis 
clipper brush. Why is this so important? It's so important because you actually need it to brush off that unwanted hair off the scalp so that we don't spend too much time going over and over the same area, right? So I took the comb out of my hand. I don't need the comb right now. I'm working with this clipper brush. So I started out open, C-shape. Now I close it down. Close it down. That's gonna give me the shortest point. My shortest point, I'm gonna break it down. Short, medium, and long. You guys follow that? Short here, medium, and long. I'm not worried about the top yet. So, close it up and work my shortest point. Work my way around, staying consistent. It's always good to have that previous cut guide in there as you work your way through. So there's my shortest point. Now, unlike the master, and I'll show you, I'm actually gonna show you the corded, cordless one for now just so that you can see and understand what I'm talking about. So you see where the master has these notches. Uh, let's pull that back a little bit. You see how the Andis have those notches? Well, the Envy doesn't. So you gotta kinda play with your clipper to get a feel for it to understand that where, where you at. So typically what I like to do I use my thumb. My thumb will tell me where I'm at. So if I roll my thumb too far, that lets me know I'm past half. Close it up and just get a feel for it. Kind of look at that blade to figure out where you're at. So you want to go in. So I started out closed. Now I'm halfway. Come in halfway. And I start to work my way up. And this is just the blending process. Once again, all the way open. Everything else will be created clipper over comb. Now, I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you just went from all the way closed, the shortest point, to halfway. What about that notch in between? So, because I need to clear that notch out in between, I close it up all the way and just open it up ever so slightly and then I come in and blend that line of demarcation that will present itself because of that drastic jump. A lot of things we do in the barbering world is pretty much visual. We make sure that we can create the gradients and create the shades that we want very visual long as we stay balanced. I use my bone structure as my reference point. So now Time to switch. The tool's back in my hand. Now I'm going clipper over comb. Using my previous cut guide, stick that comb in, and I roll the comb out. So I'm building contour. Why am I building once again? Because I need to protect the length coming off the round of the head. So I build it out, clipper open, and take out that excess hair. Work my way around. Work my way around. And you can see how I'm just freely working this through. If you guys have any questions, please uh, ask. I'm here for you tonight. Let's see what we got. Salon Central, can you post his name on this live advertisement? My name is John Mosley. My Instagram handle is popular underscore nobody. I would love if you guys follow me. Greatly appreciate it. And so now I'm working my way up the head shape. And so as you see now, I'm just working my blend at this point. You can see the shape that I've created. Not using a guard at all. I feel like once you get into not utilizing guards, you'll be able to, you know, master any haircut because you could create and control the shape that you want. So as I work down clipper over comb in those tighter areas where we were a little shorter, I close the clipper up and work my way around.
Not bad, right? What do I do to camouflage a head roll? Uh, sorry, there's nothing we could do. That guy know he has that head roll. It's been there his whole life. We just got to take him out to the ball game and call a hot dog a hot dog. I get lines from Clipper over Cone. Why do you? Why don't you have any? So the reason why you get lines from Clipper over Cone, it's really important that you use the right size comb. And this has an awesome comb uh, for Clipper over Cone. But most of the time you get Clipper over, you get lines because you're using a smaller comb. And you can't protect the rest of that haircut. So because you can't protect the rest of that haircut or that clipper, that's where those lines are coming from. I call them the stairways to heaven because it's just steps that just keep imaginarily popping up and you're like, well, what happened there, right? So that's probably why, one of the reasons why you don't have that. So then I wanna come around that ear and just start working my magic. Coming back from this side panel. So right at that mastoid, that's where I start to move forward. Luckily, I have a comb that's large enough to cover that whole side panel. So he gets the... So I slide this comb in using my guide and start to create... that shape. So now that I have that rough kind of draft in there, hey John, I've been trained to never create strong lines, especially when blending new technique barber start. So that's awesome. I'm not a fan and what he's talking about is when you see someone stamp that hard line in. I am totally not a fan of that hard line, but some people are skill set their, their, their skill set matches the ability to take that line out. I prefer to work consistently vertically up the head. And why is that? Is because everything that you do is gonna be a gradient. Everything that you're doing is going from short to long. So you're creating a graduation. So for me, I always wanna work that short to long. I don't like putting that harsh line in there either. So I totally get it and I understand. What about when the head shape is flat on one side? So. Just to keep you guys on track, I'm using my triple zero now. My clipper lever is all the way closed and I'm going in to get that nice clean look right in that sideburn area. Once again, open it halfway to set that blend. And you guys are doing amazing with the questions. Now I come back clipper over comb. Notice, even though I have a large comb and I'm working in a small section, do I stick this comb and go all the way back in? No. Most clients have an ear. This doll head has an ear so it doesn't move. So instead of changing combs, I just shift. Take it on the angle. I still have my guide. And now I work too. Whenever you're clipper over combing as well, it's very important to understand to roll your comb out. And the reason why you wanna roll your comb out is so that you can then drop the guide out of the backside of that comb and continue to work your way through it. You guys like what you're seeing so far? So you don't use guards. Love this education, by the way. I need to up my bar. I do use guards, but my guards are something that I use more so for refinement. It's not necessarily like my go-to system. I love creating shape and I love creating a haircut that's customizable for my clients. So I use guards when necessary, but for the most part, when I'm building out a haircut, it's mostly clipper over comb. And you'll see me possibly pick up my 1 16th. And you'll, the reason why you'll see me use that 1 16th because it, it's just that fine line after you get to a point to where it's too short. So right here in this mastoid area, you're an amazing educator learning so much. Thank you, I appreciate that. A lot of my clients don't want to close, close fade. Yeah, some clients don't want to close fade, but what you have to realize is the techniques are never gonna change. 
The only thing that changes is the length. So if you have a guy that wants to keep longer length, then that's where the guard comes into, into play. So now I'm using that 1 16th guard, and I'm just coming back in to refine, like I said, using it as a refinement tool, not, a nece not necessarily my workhorse. My workhorse is really my comb and my NVLI. So you can see how I'm working that shape in there. So just finishing out. Like I said, I hope you guys are enjoying this. It's always fun for me to share my knowledge and get to help the industry that I love so much and that I appreciate. So just making sure I'm tying in what was previously cut into that new cut section that I just did, that other side, before we move up to the top. I'll take this off and give them a quick brush over. So you can see now the shape that I wanted to create, the blend that I was going for, and everything else. I live in Texas. So, another thing, you wanna make sure if you're, if you're having a problem with your clippers running hot or uh, they're not, the motor's not moving as fast as you want them to, this is a great tool to also use. You wanna make sure that you use your cool care. And what do I mean by cool care? Five in one. Awesome it lubricates, disinfects, and all that good stuff. We know how important disinfecting is right now, right? And in general. So give it a little cool care touch. And now it's time for me to. You love the cool care, that's awesome. So I'm gonna bring this back down. So I'm gonna comb this back out. And this is where I'm going to show you actually how to use your clippers instead of using a pair of scissors. So I'm going to take, take my Envy. And I'm going to just work off of my sections. So it's kind of like working off of a pie section. So I'll come and push that out of the way, get a nice clean section. Now, because you're working with a clipper, it's very, very uh, teasing to grab a bigger section, but you still don't want to grab a large section. You want to stay consistent. The key for this is making sure that you have that clipper closed. So as soon as it cuts, it makes contact. So you want to come in and you want to grab that section that you previously cut as your guide and now I'll just come in and cut that off. Next section, I'm going to continue to work around that head shape. Make sure you grab all the way down and stay consistent. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'll push this hair out of the way. There's my guide at the bottom of my fingers. So I'll come in. And like I said, you notice I'm not being cut. Continue to work my way up. Next section. I hope you guys are enjoying this and following along. said no way yes way so now my body position switches and I come behind it so that I can still see the consistency in my guide extend out and there's that 
Now, after doing this technique, you might not have any knuckle hair, but it's all right. So we're gonna to continue to work our way through. Grabbing that section. And just coming all the way through. What's up? Give me some comments. What do you guys think so far? How damp is the hair? The hair is not really damp. So I, I washed the hair before we started and it probably set for about 30 to close to 30 minutes inside that clip. And so that's what you see now is that hair going back into the place of how I tied it up. I'm just going through. Making sure that we're staying consistent, picking it up. Continue to work my sections, making sure I move that hair out of the way. Always important to grab the guide from the bottom first because that sets the tone. So it makes sure that you stay consistent. Pulling up, looking at that previous cut guide and working my way through. How are you guys enjoying this so far? What do I do with Calix? Great question. I do not cut them off. And the reason why you don't cut them off is because then that client is just going to not like his hair in a few days because he has those porcupines. So you want to make sure that you don't cut them off. You want to put a little water on them and make sure that you see the way that growth pattern is happening. And then make sure you cut to that. You add it to the haircut. Over direction is a great, great uh, friend when it comes to cowlicks because it allows you the ability to preserve that length and just go in and texture and I'm gonna show you how I do a little texture work with my clipper as well I don't do a lot of men's cuts, but I see the butts coming. So now I'll come back in. Just add a little water to it. And you can see how it just goes right into that previous cut section. Now I want to make sure I have this extra hair. So extend up and make sure I get a nice clean cut. Always remember, short hair pushes longer hair. So we're gonna make sure that we get everything nice and squared away. So that hair goes right into what we needed to go into. Not too bad, right? Create that shape. So it looks great quicker that's for sure it is definitely quicker so now let's get into the top of the head so I'm a cosmetologist in school and you love learning new techniques well that's what we're here for I'm always here you could find me on Instagram I, I show different videos a lot so now that we have that that back section cut now I'm gonna go into that mohawk section this is key so the bridge of the nose is pretty much your guiding point. So I take that section and pull all of that out. And pull that next section out. You guys still with me, huh? You still following along? Tell me my, your Instagram, please. My Instagram is popular underscore nobody. 
So, I started with the back first, and typically, sometimes we'll work a mohawk section and go through the front and then connect the back. So I just started back to front now. So to get my guide, my guide now has to come from the back to connect the dots. So what I need to do is kind of give you like a triangular shape. I need to have it shorter in the back, longer to the front, and that's for styling purpose, right? So good old trusty NVLI. I want to come in and I'm going to grab this guide from the back and start to work it. Once again, clipper close. I'll come in and make, reduce the bulk and then finish it out. Continue to work my finger angle, move all the way till I lose that guide. Over directing that hair in the front up and back just a little bit to protect my length and setting my guide. So now my guide is completely put in place. So now what I'm gonna do is actually come to the side panels, push this hair forward and watch what happens, how this magic is created. Extend out and over. And I continue to work my way up because now I have a guide coming from the bottom and I have a guide now in the center. Look how easy that was. You can see the shape that I'm working off of. Same thing. Extend up, locate my guide. Now, I'm sure we're all stylists, some of us barbers on here, right? We, we kind of get where I'm going with this. Can I save you time? Can I save you money? Of course. But now, I know someone's probably thinking, well, what if I want a guy that has texture? What if he wants, you know, texture? Okay, so if he wants texture, I'm gonna show you how, right here we went straight blunt cut, zero degrees. That means that weight is gonna fall exactly where it lives there's no movement at all right but this guy wants to have a little fun he wants a little movement a little texture so i'm gonna take a section from the opposite side and push all that hair forward and i'm gonna come back and just grab our previous cut guide down the center so when i was creating that blunt cut i ran my fingers all the way up to the guide and then i came back and cut through so if you want texture and movement what do you guys think I got to do? I got to drop my fingers. Why? So that I could create that. So there it is. Now. There's the texture. And you can see it. There's my straight line. And then, like I said, once again, turn that clipper sideways and you create texture. Am I worried about cutting my finger? Not at all. But like I said, you will lose some knuckle hair, but you'll be okay with that. So same thing, continuing through, elevate. Now, once again, back to a blunt cut. Just ride it straight across. And cut through so I just cut all that texture out that we put in how about that so just grabbing that section even though I'm not working with a pair of scissors you notice I'm staying very consistent with how clean my sections are I'm not getting sloppy just because I'm using a pair of clippers Like I said, our guide is coming now from our previous cut section, that mohawk section down that center. So now we're getting longer. And if you follow the long, it's getting longer because we want a little style in the front, right? You 
said she took a chunk out of her son's ear. That's not good. So pulling that hair up, making sure that we get a nice visual on our guide. So look how quick we're cutting this top. I just moved right along and never came back and finished out my side. So working through. Are you guys enjoying this? Let me know. Why would you use a clipper over scissors? It's personal preference. Some people like to just learn different techniques to do a lot of different things. But if you worry about sometimes cutting that finger, here the benefit of having a clipper in your hand is you don't have to worry about cutting your finger. You can work freely and move freely without that worry. But as you can see, I'm just cutting right through. Clean section. Extending up. Grabbing that angle. Working my way across. Extending up. Anybody have any questions? Reduce the cutting fingers. That's exactly the answer. You don't want to cut those fingers. I haven't cut my fingers yet using this technique. So I thought it would be awesome to share with you guys. Split it down the middle. Over direct this back. Extend up to find that guide. And cut that extra length off. Same thing, find that guide in the front, extend back, so that's over direction that I'm utilizing. We got some viewers in here. Will I be at Premiere? That's what I'm hearing. Just making sure I'm staying consistent. So you see how much length we left? And when we go through, you can see the connection. Now, of course, I still like to cross check and make sure that I keep my angles and everything perfect. Now, I know I showed you one way, and now I'm gonna show you another way to connect the dots on the side for you. I wouldn't recommend spraying your model down like that, but he already paid. So another good thing to do, you have your guide on the side, right? So now you could come in and utilize clipper over comb to help you connect the dots. So that clipper, so you're just grabbing that guide from your previous cut section and finishing out that extra length. Said so you like it. So now you can see that longer length on the side. I could take that, uh, let me raise them up a little bit for you. So now I could take this side Grab him, there's my guide. Stick that comb in, let that guide fall out. And continue to work my way all the way up to the front. Not a bad quick, quick transition, right? So you still have the length that you want in the front. So if I was to blow dry this and style it, he'll have that triangular shape. It'll be shorter coming off the round of the head, but going into our longer distance into the front. I love doing haircuts with my clippers. I love just having fun and experimenting and playing. 
Now, think about this. Even as a barber, I just used a technique and I showed you how we could create this look. But this is, you could create a pixie cut doing the same technique. You could utilize your clippers in finger work and not be afraid of getting your fingers cut. You could still create that awesome texture. And just to recap really quick, like I said, with that texture, you wanna recap. If you want texture, you elevate and turn that clipper and come down to get texture. If you want zero, zero elevation, you don't want no movement inside that haircut, you come in and bring the clipper back towards you. So down for texture, back or forward towards you or away from you to create a blunt line. So you really got to figure out which one is that guy going to go for. Does he want that texture or not? Then, like I said, also utilizing clipper over comb to connect the dots around that parietal ridge area. So we're going we're gonna to move this guy to the side. And with that being said, let's, let's have a little recap. So, said I need a men's cut how-to every Friday. Well, let's see if we could get me back next Friday. Who knows? I agree with you guys. I would love to come back and hang out with you guys some more and give you some more time. So, NVLI, Cordless Master. But when you go into your Salon Centric, you should be looking for the Corded Master, the one with the cord, right? So, Slimline Pro, make sure to use that, that nice little groove we have back there for that thumb and balance. You don't want to miss that out. Your Corded T-Liner. Make sure that you get the T. Why? Because you want to utilize the corners. Bring those curves back to life right in that side area. Every guy looks for that curve, so make sure you keep that curve. Yes, the T-liners are a trimmer. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's my time. If you got any questions, you can find me on Instagram at popular underscore nobody. Salon centric, salon centric community. I want to thank you guys for allowing me to spend some time with you, showing you opposite ways to do something that you might have thought one way was the only way to achieve that goal. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you guys again.